It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Glory to God. Uh, let's see. This morning we're going to talk about, the Lord said uh, 2021 would be a year of the glory in the church. The glory in the church. So let's get that phrase from Ephesians chapter 3, and um, we'll see about what the glory is individually, corporately, and the glory of God in the church, some assembly required. <laughs> the place where they were assembled was shaken in the book of Acts. Some assembly required. Uh, as we drove in here today, I saw people coming through the parking lot coming to church and I said, man, I love people that go to church. I said, I love people that go to church. I love people that that church is a priority. It's their custom. It's their habit. It's uh, their kids know it's important. Grandkids know it's important. And so, wow, what a blessing to be with a lot of people that love church. It's really difficult to love the head without loving the body. Come on, Christ is the head. We're his body. So in our house, our family, my dad pastored many years. Then we were trained to go to church. And so it uh, didn't matter what's happening. We're going to church. Actually, when I was 17, I got put in jail. And I happened to get put in jail on a Wednesday so I called my mom and my daddy. I said, can y'all come and get me? They said, where are you? So I'm in jail. They said, well, you know, we have church tonight. <laughs> True story. So we, we may get you later after church or we'll see you tomorrow. So my mama actually said, prop up your feet and stay a while. <laughs> kind of like that. That lady that her husband got mad because she went to church so much. And so he got so frustrated, she was fixing to go to church. So he got a gun out and stuck it to her head, cocked the gun, said, what are you going to do? She said, well, if you pull that trigger, I'm going to heaven. If you don't pull it, I'm going to church. <laughs> so in our house, you had, actually had to be dead for three days before you could skip church. So... If you said you were sick, mama would say, go get healed. <laughs> so we went to church and got healed. And so I love church. And so Ephesians chapter 3 talks about that phrase, the glory in the church. And so look at verse 14. We'll read right all the way through verse 21. The apostle Paul's prayer here for believers. He said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you or grant us according to the riches of his glory. You should underline that phrase, that he would grant you or grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might or mighty power by his spirit or the Holy Spirit in the inner man, that he would grant us to be strengthened with might or mighty power by the Holy Spirit himself, the Amplified says, by the Holy Spirit himself, indwelling your innermost being and personality. How many like to acknowledge the Holy Spirit dwelling in your inner man, your innermost being and personality, and that you actually recognize him yield to him, respond to him, and he strengthens your inner man with mighty power. Hallelujah. Actually, Dad Hagen said, all physical healing is spiritual. 
that you receive it first in your inner man and then it's manifested in your body. How many know that the Holy Spirit working in your inner man can solve a lot of problems with the outer man? <laughs> and so Paul here is this prayer uh, that you and I would be strengthened. And then he uses the phrase, according to the rich of his glory. Then he says, with might or tremendous power, tremendous power. So there's tremendous power available. And uh, this is the same, uh, the apostle Paul that wrote the Ephesians 1 prayer that talked about the tremendous power that raised Christ from the dead. And he said, and that mighty power, God will strengthen your inner man with mighty power. And um, the Amplified says, in your innermost being and personality. Your inner man. Did you know that you're not stuck with the personality you got? Don't look around right now. In other words, you blame a lot. This is kind of the way I am. This is my personality. But I guarantee you when the Holy Ghost gets loose in your inner man, you yield to him and are filled with him, he will change your personality. Let's try that again. I said he'll change your personality. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now we know he lives in us, but for some people you can almost hear him inside saying, help, let me out. So a lot of people have the Holy Spirit <laughs> tied up and gagged somewhere in the inside of them. And they only let him out maybe once a year at a special meeting. How many of y'all like to let him loose this morning? Come on, he's on the inside. Let him loose this morning. Work in your inner man, or one translation says, he gives you the power to win by his spirit working in your spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit working in our inner man, our spirit man. So he says, uh, I love connecting this with Isaiah 40 where it says he gives power to the faint. And to them who have no might, he increases strength. Let's try that again. He gives power to the faint. When you feel like you're about to collapse, come on, can't do it no more, can't take it no more. He gives power to the faint. And to them who have no might, he increases strength. Praise the Lord. Come on, he said, even the youth will faint and grow weary, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, you'll mount up with wings as eagles. And he said, what's going to happen? You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and you will not collapse. Go ahead and laugh about that a while. In other words, he said. And if he's going to strengthen your inner man by the Holy Spirit, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And there's joy in the Holy Ghost. That might be one area that he's going to work in your heart is supernatural joy, Holy Ghost joy, strengthening your spirit so you will not collapse. You don't have to live weary. You don't have to live worn out. You don't have to live exhausted. Come on. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. So if he's going to strengthen your inner man, he's going to strengthen it. Mighty power and infusion of energy in your spirit. Then that's going to affect your mind. That's going to affect your body. That's going to affect your whole life. When your spirit is strong. I said when your inner man is strong. I like to say it this way. You cannot be defeated unless you are depleted. Let's try that again. I said, you cannot be defeated unless you're spiritually depleted. In other words, we're commanded by God to be strengthened and to be filled, filled and filled again. Amen. So he says, this prayer is a prayer for born again believers, even a prayer for spirit filled believers. Amen. Amen. And, and, um, most of you have a, a cell phone, and on the outside of that phone, it has an indicator on whether it's full or half full or running on red, almost empty, which is really bad if you're using it for a GPS. 
<laughs> How many ever been using your phone for a GPS and you look at the battery and you're like, oh, we really going to be lost in a minute. <laughs> and so it must be charged. I said it must be charged. It must be filled and filled again. So I thought in church it'd be nice if you had an indicator on everybody's forehead. It'd either say fill, half fill, running close to empty, you know. You... Out. How many believe the Holy Ghost can recharge your inner man and your spirit? That changes your perspective on life and you become conscious that the greater one lives on the inside of you, that he's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead and he dwells on the inside of you and he quickens your mortal body. He'll work in your immune system and he'll destroy the works of the devil. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. How many want to act like he's in there? Say, I know he's in there. Jesus said, I have taken you on as a project. He said, and the Holy Spirit's going to have to move in you forever. We thought he could fix you in a few weeks, but he said, no, it's going to take forever. So the Holy Spirit, <laughs> Jesus said, when he comes, he's going to move in you for how long? forever. So you need to look in the mirror in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, I know you're in there. Don't act like you're not in there. I really need you in there really bad. So you recognize him. First of all, recognize him and recognize who he is on the inside of you and recognize what he does and then make room for him or yield to him or respond to him. Respond to him. When you yield to him, the way you yield to the Holy Spirit is the way you will yield to all the will of God for your life. All right, let's try that one more time. The way you yield to the Holy Spirit will determine how you surrender and yield to the will of God for your life. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He is the genius. Amen. And so this prayer where Paul prays, and we pray this for ourselves, learn from Dad Hagen to pray it every day. And so, Father God, this is what I'm asking that you would grant us today, individually and corporately, and I believe you can tell when it's happening. I said, I believe you can tell when it's happening. You cannot have that kind of power working in you and you not know it. Are y'all still here? The only thing I can tell that you cannot do when the Holy Ghost is moving is nothing. That's the one thing you cannot do. In other words, when the Holy Spirit's moving, working in your inner man, Dad Hagen said there'll be times of great joy. He said there may be some rejoicing or some dancing. You may not be pretty. Even David got ugly. Even his wife said he looked, like, he looked ugly dancing like that. David said, I shall be yet more vile than this. You love a man that can talk back to his wife periodically. <laughs> so when David danced with all of his might to usher in the glory of God, amen? And so Dad Hagen said when that joy of the, this move of the Holy Spirit's working and the glory of God's in manifestation, he said there will be great joy. And he said, and sometimes you'll just start laughing. He said, sometimes you'll start rejoicing and you may start dancing. <laughs> I 
Dad Hagen said, there is a blessing that you receive from God that you can't receive any other way than when you're dancing or rejoicing. I know some of y'all can't dance, but you could scoot. Or move a little to the right, move a little to the left. <laughs> I know y'all y'all say, well, is this supposed to be happening at nine o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Strangely enough, that's when the day of Pentecost actually happened. <laughs> so you're at the right time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead and get filled up. I said, go ahead and get filled up. Hallelujah. So I, I want to get filled up. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to get filled up 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fill. Fill up. Full of joy. Full of joy. Full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, no more grief, no more sadness, no more sorrow. Come on. Full of joy, full of the Holy Ghost. Fill up. Hallelujah. Everybody shout glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, let him rise up on the inside of you. Yield to him the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Praise God. Now, right, you can sit down for a minute. Ha, ha. So he said, sometimes you start laughing. He said, sometimes there'll be some dancing. Rejoicing, and when he was in his 80s, I'd see him uh, dancing. Um, then he said, sometimes the glory or the anointing will get so strong that you can't stand up or you can't even sit up. Heavy are the glory, the manifested presence of God that's in you also comes on you or fills you or saturates you. And he said, then you can't. Stand up. You can't sit up. You just fall over. That's why you're going to need a new body before you get to heaven. Or everybody would be just laying around for a few million years. In other words, you can actually overdose on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> until you get lost in the spirit or on the day of Pentecost they acted like they were drunk or they were intoxicated and the glory of God is when the presence of God registers on your senses the presence of God registers in the scene you see the glory you experience the glory on the day of Pentecost, they were drunk, intoxicated, filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't need Jack Daniels, don't need marijuana, don't need no cocaine. Come on, you can just get drunk, drinking. Drinking from the presence of God. And this, this prayer is really a drinking prayer. Jesus said, come unto me and drink in John 7. He did not say, come unto me and think. If you'll drink better, you'll actually think better. Your drinking can change your thinking. So Jesus said, come unto me and drink. So you have to make sure you're sitting next to a drinker and not just a thinker. So Jesus compared being filled with the Holy Spirit in John 7 and the, the Holy Spirit coming from the glorified 
Jesus glorified, and now he sends the Holy Spirit, which is his glory coming to us. And so he said, you drink, you drink. So the day of Pentecost, they were the original drinkers. I don't know if they got a T-shirt or not, but they were the original <laughs> drinkers. So it said they were all there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so they were all there to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were wondering exactly what does that look like? Well, they found out when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, these are the original drinkers drinking from the resurrected presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, drinking from his triumph, drinking from his authority, from his blessing, and that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Amen. We drink, so sometimes you need some drinking music. Sometimes you need some drinking friends. Like you just bring a friend over. Say, how'd you like to come over to the house and we're going to have a Holy Ghost drinking party? <laughs> so the Lord told me one time, he said, everybody needs at least four crazy friends that believe God. So everybody needs at least, you could have more than that. But you need at least four crazy friends that don't care what they look like. When they're worshiping and when they're praising and when they're in the presence of God, they're not so concerned about what everybody else thinks about them. They just get in the presence of the Lord, get filled with the Holy Ghost, get full of joy, don't care what anybody thinks about them. Say, no, I came here to receive and to be filled and to be strengthened in my inner man with mighty power. My name is Pastor Cornelius uh, Tobing. Uh, I'm, I'm from Papua New Guinea. Um, I've been pastoring World of Faith Church for the last uh, 14 years. And uh, uh, it has been basically the Word of God, that, the gospel that has uh, brought us this far. Well, Mark Hankins, uh, I think we got connected on the video. I was in Bible school uh, going for my diploma with Rema, that was 2015. He came on, he was speaking, he was teaching on video. Me and my wife, we went back to school uh, 2015 and 16. And just how he presented the gospel was different. Uh, uh, not just the principles, not just the, the word, but everything. Yeah. He brought the gospel and, and to his simplest form, you know. I went to his meeting in Australia. I don't know Mark, uh, but uh, because we just love the way he, he ministers, and he presents the gospel. We were surprised that he called us uh, to come to Papua New Guinea. And uh, that's the biggest miracle in my life. It's another thing to hear the word, but it's another thing to catch the spirit of that word. And so we caught that spirit, and when Mark came, uh, it was like revival, and uh, yeah, and it's never been the same again. And I always say this, and I shout it at the top of my voice, it will never be the same again. For the first time Mark came, you know, uh, uh, his giving was different. I mean, uh, for a new person to come to a place, Mark didn't come to get anything from us. He came to bless us. Uh, came and not only to bless us with the word, but came and also. You know, I mean, it's a saying everywhere, they're only coming for your money. Mark didn't come that way. He came to bless us. Yeah, bless us significantly and help us 
build our the office for the school. So we had the host the school and the ministry has helped us build the, the units for the lecturers. Yeah. Are you ready for a study on the glory of God? The glory of God in its simplest form is the goodness of God. It's His manifest presence and is the one thing that satisfies the human soul. As believers, God has called us to be carriers of His glory. As we hunger and cry out for God to show us His glory, we will see His power revealed and manifested. In his brand new book, The Glory, Experiencing the Goodness of God, Pastor Mark Hankins will explain how experiencing the glory of God will bring the changes you desire. The glory of God is the goodness of God in extravagant manifestation. God's design for your life will always include the wow factor. It will be like a dream coming true. With this new book, you'll also get the three CD set, The Glory. Your gift of $20 will help Mark and Trina train believers around the world. To order Pastor Mark Hankins' new book, please call us today at 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for tuning in today while we have been talking about the glory of God. You know that the glory of God is His goodness. It's His goodness. It's the wow factor. It's those things that happen in our lives that you're like, man, that could only be God. I've had those moments in my life where I'm like, wow, only God could do that. Do you know that is the glory of God? That is His goodness. And He wants us to live in His goodness every single day of our lives. He wants you to live in His goodness and in His glory every day. My dad has this awesome new book out. It's called The Glory, Experiencing the Goodness of God. So many Christians, so many believers don't know that they can actually walk in God's goodness every single day of their lives. Get this book. It is exciting. It will show you the wow factor of living by faith and living in the goodness of God. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran, and we'll see you again. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. 